welcome to the second lecture. Uh, in today's lecture, we are going to see about the open cycle gas turbine power plant. But just as a recapitulation, in last lecture, we had seen uh, the basics of uh, turbo machines. What do we mean by turbo machine? What are the different components of turbo machines? Like what, how to classify the turbo machines based upon uh, fluid used we classified them as uh, steam based or hydro based turbo machineries or in case of uh, gas we classified them as uh, gas based turbo machineries. Further we have also classified them based upon the energy interaction. So, in case of uh, uh, some machines if energy is coming from the rotor to the fluid then we call them as the work absorbing machines or in some machines if we have work transfer or energy transfer from the fluid to the rotor, then we have called them as um, work producing machines. So, such classification was done in last class. Then we compared all these classes of turbo machines with uh, the more uh, prevalent or more conventionally used machines which are positive displacement machines. And then we found that there are certain advantages of uh, turbo machines and then there are certain issues with uh, positive displacement machines. But then again in case of positive displacement uh, we had seen that they are not just the uh, reciprocating kind they can be rotary kind also. Further we found out what are the components of uh, the different turbo machines like compressor like turbine in case of compressor we have first. A rotor and then we have diffuser, but for in case of turbine we have first nozzle and then we have a rotor. So, this classification was seen and then we had seen a difference between impulse machines and we have seen the difference its difference with the reaction machine. Also we have seen the difference between axial flow machines and radial flow machines. So, having this classification done for various um, aspects of turbo machines and its comparison with other complementary or contemporary machines. Now, we are starting with uh, the gas turbine power plant which is of open cycle type. So, obviously, when we say that there is open cycle gas turbine power plant, there would be a closed cycle gas turbine power plant and the subject of closed cycle power plant will be for the discussion in the next class. But this class is mainly for open cycle gas power plant. We have seen that as a gas power plant is a turbo machine, the compressor and turbine are the two rotating parts of the gas turbine. And these two elements are again there in the open cycle gas turbine power plant. And now if I pretend and if I feel that uh, suppose there is a compressor and there is a turbine and then they together would make a gas turbine power plant. So, I will connect the compressor and the turbine. So, there is a compressor, there is a turbine and I connect it. So, what would happen in this case is that there is energy E 1 at the inlet to the compressor. Then after the process of compression, we know that compressor is a work absorbing machine. So, the work which is uh, the energy which is in the rotor will be given to the fluid. So, fluid has some energy to start with in the inlet of the compressor would get further increased to energy E 2 at the outlet of the compressor. But since I have just connected compressor and turbine to form a gas turbine power plant, I would pass this E 2 energy to the gas turbine. So, gas turbine will have E 2 energy at the inlet. And we know again that gas turbine or turbine is a work producing machine. Since it is work producing machine, it will extract the energy from the working fluid. And since it is extracting energy from the working fluid, working fluid after passing through the gas turbine will again have energy E 1. Obviously, my assumption over here is that I am assuming that both compressor and turbine have highest efficiencies or rather 100 percent efficiencies. They are very smooth frictionless devices. So, they have they are ideal compressors and ideal turbines. So, what has happened that compressor produced a fluid which is at high energy 
and then that fluid is passed to the turbine. So, what would happen is if they are connected to each other then no power will be produced. Since there is some power which will be required for the compressor to run and exactly that much power will be supplied by the turbine. So, net power produced will be 0. So, no net power will be produced. If it would have been producing a power then it that composition of compressor and turbine would be similar to that what we call it as PMM1. Without supply of any energy it would produce a workout and it is not correct. So, such composition to form the gas turbine power plant is not proper. Similar effects would be seen if at all there are some other components connected, but if component efficiencies are too low and they are not in practice are the ideal components like compressor and turbine, they will have efficiencies not 100 percent and lower than that. So, in 1940s two French engineers tried to develop a gas turbine power plant, but the efficiency of the compressor was just 60 percent and the temperature or the maximum temperature of cycle was 740 Kelvin. So, the low energy input and low efficiencies of the components led to hardly small amount of power output. So, what we have to think over here is to formulate a composition to devise a gas turbine power plant such that we should supply large amount of energy to get more amount of power output. So, in case of open cycle gas turbine power plant, a classical open cycle gas turbine power plant again has a compressor and a gas turbine, they are connected by a shaft. So, this arrangement is a single shaft arrangement where compressor and turbine are connected with each other and then they are again connected by a combustion chamber. In the combustion chamber we will have we will have fuel which is combusted. So, practically the fluid will enter the compressor, get compressed, rises its pressure head, then instead of directly going to the gas turbine it would go to the combustion chamber. And in the combustion chamber we will have fuel burnt. So, combustion will take place in the combustion chamber in the presence of fuel. So, chemical energy from the fuel will be used to increase the energy of the working medium. This is an internal combustion approach which is happening in IC engines which are of our classical IC engines, petrol engine and diesel engine. So, here we are supplying the fuel and that fuel is burning the air. So, classically in open cycle gas turbine power plant we are having air as the intake and the major concern or major advantage of air as the working medium is that air has oxygen and oxygen is a naturally available oxidizer. So, we just need to burn the fuel in the or we just need to put the fuel in the combustion chamber. So, we have high pressure, high temperature air which has passed through the compressor and reached the combustion chamber will burn the fuel which is injected or which is available in the combustion chamber. Thus, elevated energy, high temperature and high pressure fuel will get high working fluid will be passed to the gas turbine and then gas turbine would rotate and run. So, this is how a classical open cycle gas turbine power plant look like. At the exit of the gas turbine, the working medium will be exhausted to the atmosphere. So, it would not complete its cycle. So, at the intake we take air from the atmosphere and at the exhaust we let the gas go outside directly to the atmosphere. So, this is how open cycle gas turbine power plant operates. So, even is the energy at the inlet, it is the energy at the outlet as we have added the combustion energy uh, to the working medium E 3 is the energy at the inlet to the gas turbine and E 4 is the energy which is at the outlet of the gas turbine. So, there are some approaches which people have tried 
for having combustion in the combustion chamber. And obviously, if we have some prior acquaintance with the automobile engines, we know that there are two types of engines, one is the petrol engine and other is the diesel engine. Thermodynamically, if we try to see petrol and diesel engines, then we know that in case of petrol engine, the combustion takes place at constant volume sense. But in case of diesel engine, the combustion takes place at the constant pressure sense. So, here as well, this open cycle gas turbine power plant being an internal combustion type, we also can think of constant volume and constant pressure combustions. Theoretically speaking, if we try to attempt constant pressure, constant volume combustion, then constant volume combustion would obviously for the given pressure ranges would lead to maximum efficiency or higher efficiency in comparison with constant pressure. But there are some problems with constant volume combustion to achieve in a machine, in a engine, in a power plant like gas turbine power plant. As we know in case of petrol engine, we have constant volume combustion where we have valves to the internal combustion engine. We have an inlet valve from which the charge which is a mixture of air and the petrol comes into the combustion chamber or inside the cylinder and then inlet valve gets closed and then we compress the charge and then we have sparking and which leads to further to the combustion. So, what is happening over here is that the inlet valve gets closed after having intake stroke and at the same time exhaust valve is also closed. So, the process of combustion is possible with the arrangement of valves to take place in the constant volume sense. So, we need, we feel to have the need of the valves to arrange constant volume combustion, but it is difficult in case of a continuous flow machine like the gas turbine. The internal combustion engines of petrol kind is not a continuous operating machine as we know that there are four strokes or piston moves up and down four times in one cycle out of which only one stroke or one motion produces the power. For rest of the three that power partially would get consumed, but in case of gas turbine we are having continuous mass of fluid which is coming in getting combusted and going out from the turbine. So, it is not possible to have walls or rather it is difficult to have walls in case of a gas turbine power plant. However, many successful attempts were done in the period of 1908 to 1930 in Germany to build a gas turbine power plant with constant volume combustion. However, constant pressure combustion is desirable to have a continuous flow machine. There is one more advantage of constant pressure combustion and that advantage is that we can handle large amount of mass flow rate of the working medium in case of uh, constant pressure combustion. So, constant pressure combustion since can deal with continuous operation and also can handle large amount of mass flow rate, it is a desirable option among the two as what we say a constant volume combustion and constant pressure combustion. So, the open cycle power plant now is comprised of a compressor, a combustion chamber and a turbine. So, these are the three entities of a open cycle gas turbine power plant and we had seen that among these, these three entities compressor and turbine are turbo machines, but combustion chamber is a stationary part of the simple open cycle gas turbine power plant. Here one should clearly see a big difference that the process of compression takes place in the compressor process of combustion 
takes place in the combustion chamber and process of expansion takes place in the turbine. So, these three processes take place in the three separate components of the power plant and this fact of having three different thermodynamic processes taken care by three different components of a power plant is making gas turbine power plant distinct from the conventional internal combustion engines of petrol and diesel kind. Since as we know in petrol and diesel kind of engines we have a piston cylinder arrangement and that piston cylinder arrangement itself is used for the compression and there only we will have combustion and then we have expansion. So, com compression, combustion and expansion takes place in the same entity in case of petrol and diesel engine. But in case of gas turbine, we have three separate entities compressor, combustion chamber and turbine. So, we have to design three different parts for designing the components for three different processes and it is again unlike in case of IC engines which is petrol and diesel kind. So, we have to design three different parts, we have to test these three different parts and then we have to assemble three different parts of the gas turbine power plant to form a gas turbine power plant for necessary uh, uh, necessary objective of ours. It may be electricity production or it may be for propulsion or transportation application. So, there is one more thing that as we say that open cycle gas turbine power plant has three components, but it is not that it can have only three components, it can have multiple components more than three. And this need comes from the fact that we need to have more power output or for a given uh, constraint of uh, having energy source available or atmospheric constraints or design constraints, we want to have maximum efficiency. So, we want to maximize the efficiency or we want to maximize the power output. So, in these cases, we have to add on some extra components to the gas turbine power plant so as to have higher power output and higher efficiency of the power plant. So, we can think of having additional component, but addition of each component leads to addition of weight, leads to addition of cost. So, the added or modified gas turbine power plant becomes bulky and it may become costly as well, but there is need in certain cases where we have to improve the power output or we have to improve the efficiency. In general, single shaft kind of arrangement as what we had seen earlier to come to constitute a gas turbine power plant is very conventionally used for electricity generation where fixed load and fixed speed are the requirements. So, we have seen that we can attach different components to increase the power output and to increase the uh, efficiency. So, but for a given composition or for a given availability, we can think of increasing the efficiency of the um, power plant by having higher pressure ratio of the cycle. Here cycle pressure ratio we can roughly design at this moment of our course as the pressure ratio which the compressor has risen the pressure. Means initial pressure is P1 at the entry to the compressor, outlet pressure is P2 at the outlet of the compressor. So, P2 by P1 is the driving pressure ratio for the gas turbine power plant. So, if we increase the driving pressure ratio of the power plant, it can increase the efficiency. So, if we want to increase the driving pressure ratio, so we obviously have to increase the compression amount. So, we have to use multiple compressors for these aspects. So, multi stage compression is preferred in case of increasing the cycle pressure ratio and initially it was difficult to have very high pressure ratio uh, maybe 9, 10 to achieve in the early stages of the development of gas turbine power plant. But with evolution of the aerodynamics of the compressor blades, now it has 
reached a state that we can reach the compression ratios or the cycle pressure ratios of the order of 30, 40, so that we can ha get higher and higher efficiency of the gas turbine power cycle. So, in case of multi stage compression, we have low pressure compressor which is connected which gets the air and then it compresses the air for initial rise in pressure and the air which is coming out from the outlet of the low pressure compressor will be supplied to the high pressure compressor and then high pressure compressor supplies the high pressure air to the combustion chamber where we will have fuel combusted into the high pressure and high temperature combustion, combustion chamber and then um, we have the outlet of the combustion chamber connected to the high pressure turbine. So, then outlet of the high pressure turbine will be connected to the low pressure turbine. Here as we see the multi staging is not just for the compression, but it is also for the turbine. So, we have multi staging concept for compressor for getting the higher and higher pressure ratio and here we are having separate turbines to dive separate compressors. So, this is there is multi stage compression and there is multi stage expansion. So, this is an open cycle gas turbine power plant with multiple stages. So, this is an example we are having multiple compressors over here. So, multi stage compression here so as to achieve the higher pressure ratio. So, we have now come to a point that we want to increase the efficiency. One way what we have said that we can increase the efficiency by increasing the pressure ratio of the cycle, but there is one more way by which we can increase the efficiency of the cycle by introducing a heat exchanger. This concept is there in steam power plants also, we will see it how it is executed over here. So, compressor will get the air at the intake and that is connected to the combustion chamber where fuel burns, it is passed to the turbine, but here turbine will not directly exhaust the air or, or the gas to the atmosphere, but it is connected to a heat exchanger where heat transfer will take place between the hot exhaust gas turbine gas with the inlet to the combustion chamber. In the inlet of the combustion chamber, we have comparatively much lesser temperature and after the burning of the fuel, we enhance the temperature of the gas. So, what we achieve practically over here is that we would need lesser fuel. Since the temperature of the gas which is supplied to the combustion chamber will be partially raised by the heat exchanger. So, heat exchanger's job over here in this context is to rise the temperature of the gas which is supplied to the combustion chamber. And then we are having higher efficiency in the presence of heat exchanger attached with a gas turbine power plant. We are going to revisit this when we come back or when we come to the thermodynamic cycles. As what we have said that pressure ratio is one of the governing parameters for higher efficiency, but we again can have heat exchanger to improve the efficiency. There is a problem with a heat exchanger. Here, when we are transferring heat between the high temperature exhaust of the gas turbine with to the low pressure, low temperature, uh, not low pressure, low temperature gas which is going into the combustion chamber. In this process of heat transfer, there is loss, pressure loss due to the friction. So, this frictional pressure loss leads to the lower work output of the gas turbine power plant due to frictional power loss and then this puts a limit on use of the heat exchanger for the gas turbine power plant. This frictional loss account would make us to use the heat exchanger based power plant only for low pressure ratio gas turbines. Actually, what would happen in case of high pressure ratio gas turbine power plants is the with increase in pressure ratio we would have higher 
and higher loss in the heat exchanger. So, it is not good idea to have higher losses in the presence of heat exchanger. So, we have low pressure ratio gas turbine power plants only which operate on heat exchanger. Basically, heat exchanger is used here for increasing efficiency, but as it is associated with frictional power loss, we can bypass the use of heat exchanger in case of high pressure ratio gas turbine. Since increment of pressure is already sitting when we are telling that we are using high pressure gas turbine power plant. So, we have the compressor blades which can increase the pressure ratio to our desirable value and this higher pressure rise would automatically lead to higher efficiency. So, this is one more schematic where we have exhaust of the turbine hitting the inlet to the combustion chamber. Here the name is given to the heat exchanger as regenerator and this name is also given such name in steam power cycles. In steam power cycle also regenerator concept is used where st steam is partially taken from the steam turbine and it is used to heat the water which is going towards the boiler or steam generator. This would reduce the energy input in the combustion chamber in case of gas turbine or energy input in the boiler in case of steam turbine. So, lower energy input requirement makes the power plant more efficient in case of heat exchanger. There is one more concept for having heat exchanger. As what we have seen in case of open cycle gas turbine power plant, we were considering that fuel getting burnt in the combustion chamber and those fuels are mostly either gaseous fuels or liquid fuels. So, we have lesser chance to use solid fuels in the gas turbine power plant. So, as to accommodate solid fuels in the gas turbine power plant, we have compressor, then it will take the air, compresses it and then it will pass to the gas turbine, but in between it will have a heat exchanger where the air gets heated using the gas which is an outcome from the burning of the fuel. So, there is a heat exchange, so this heater or this heat exchanger is bypassing the combustion chamber. So, this arrangement makes it a external combustion open cycle gas turbine power plant. So, here combustion is taken place inside this externally to the power plant and those combustion products are used to heat the air which is then passed over the turbine. So, here we can use fuel of our choice, burn it and then pass it through the heat exchanger so that heat transfer can take place. This is a modified version of open cycle gas turbine power plant. Examples of fuel which we can use like pulverized coal and there is one more uh, thing what we can think over here is the combustion products would not get mixed with the actual air. When we are thinking open cycle uh, gas turbine power plant where there is a combustion chamber, combustion directly takes place in air. So, having combustion taking place in air, we have combustion products in the gas which is passing over the turbine. So, we have some combustion products which are harmful to the turbine, having presence of those combustion products, there is a chance that turbine blades get eroded, but with such an arrangement the air does not come into contact with the combustion products. So, we can have enhanced life of the blades of the gas turbine. Mainly the fuels which we can think for use in, in such an arrangement of heat exchanger is uh, are the fuels which are titled as dirty fuels. Since the dirty fuels or the fuels which produce harmful products can be obviously accommodated in this uh, gas turbines, so that such fuels either have low cost 
or have large abundance can be utilized for our basic objective either to achieve basic objective and to reduce the cost. But this heat exchanger is less efficient since this heat exchanger actually has large temperature gradient and this ex heat exchanger is actually passing the energy from the uh, high temperature exhaust of the com external combustion to the air and this large temperature gradient makes it a less efficient device as compared to the combustion chamber and in the combustion chamber we have complete chemical energy, maximum chemical energy getting absorbed in the working medium, but here we cannot absorb maximum working in a maximum energy of the gas. So, this this arrangement would have lesser efficiency as compared with the other arrangement what we have seen in earlier slide. We have seen that there are multiple attachments which can be thought for the attaching to the uh, gas turbine power plant to increase the um, power output or increase the efficiency. So, some are in one of the arrangements is we are seeing over here that gas turbine power plant with heat exchanger and reheater. So, in this case we have low pressure compressor and then we have high pressure compressor. There is one more entity over here which is called as intercooler. So, basically what we are seeing is open cycle gas turbine power plant with intercooler, heat exchanger and reheater. Then low pressure compression to high pressure compression in between has an intercooler. We know that or we are going to see again a revisit again when we are going to see thermodynamic cycle, we practically want to have compression process to be isothermal for lower and lower work input requirement. So, that can be achieved by the introduction of a intercooler. So, there is an intercooler which would take away the heat which would be we uh, take away the heat which otherwise would be sitting in the form of uh, rise in temperature during the process of compression in low pressure compressor and then from high pressure compressor the fuel uh, will be passed in the combustion chamber and the air would get introduced into the combustion chamber. After combustion chamber then the gas would pass to the high pressure turbine and from the high pressure turbine it would not directly go to the low pressure turbine, but it would have a reheater. A reheater is used generally to increase the power output. Reheater is nothing but a combustion chamber. Here we are having certain amount of oxygen left and then that oxygen would again be burnt in the reheater by introduction of the fuel and so burning of the fuel into the reheater would again increase the temperature of the gas and that gas would be passed through the low pressure turbine. Then exhaust of low pressure turbine would be used to heat the gas or is the air which is getting passed to the combustion chamber. So, this arrangement is what we can see is a mixture of all kinds of attachments what we can think for a gas turbine power plant. One we have <coughs> intercooler, other we have reheater and then we have heat exchanger. So, these entities were thought in earlier days for having more power output and more efficiency as per the requirement. So, if we add as what we discussed an extra component in a gas turbine power plant and that extra component would lead to complexity in the design, it would lead to additional cost and it would also lead to the um, problems like what we have seen in case of heat exchanger, but such things are required if we are interested in the uh, increment in power output or we are interested in increment of the efficiency. Now, we are going to see some extra arrangement of the gas turbine power plant and that arrangement is called as twin shaft arrangement. 
till time what we were discussing was open cycle gas turbine power plant with one shaft, single shaft arrangement. But now what we are going to see is a open cycle gas turbine power plant with twin shaft arrangement. In case of twin shaft arrangement, again we have compressor, we have combustion chamber, we have turbine and turbine, high pressure turbine and compressor they are connected by one shaft. But exhaust of this turbine is given to the low pressure turbine which is run by a separate shaft. So, there is a separate shaft for the low pressure turbine, but high pressure turbine drives the compressor. So, this is what called as the twin shaft arrangement of a gas turbine power plant. What it is going to help us? How it is going to help us? Basically, in case of single shaft arrangement, we are fixed with certain load and we are fixed with certain speed, but here we can have flexibility of operation. We need flexibility in many operations and those operations may be something like we have marine propeller uh, driving operation or we have pipeline compressor, we need road vehicles to be operated with variable load and variable speed conditions and in such condition it becomes difficult if we have turbine and compressor they are mechanically connected with each other. Since turbine has to run at one speed and compressor would run at other speed, so then we need a gearbox to match their speeds. But if we have a uh, twin shaft arrangement, then the shaft is used for power production is a separate one which is not the one which is used to connect between the compressor and the turbine. So, this shaft or this turbine which is uh, actually anchoring the power output is called as free shaft or it is called as power turbine. And power turbine is what used for the variable or fun flexibility in the operation and such an arrangement is called as twin shaft arrangement. Here as we have seen that since compressor and turbine run at the same speed, we are not in need of a uh, gearbox. Similarly, similar requirement is there for marine propeller, where marine propeller will have lower speed, but compressor has to run at higher speed. So, there would have been a need of a gearbox. Having propeller connected with the free shaft, we can bypass the uh, gearbox uh, requirement and then we can directly club it with the power turbine. Then we have this arrangement which is combination of compressor and high pressure turbine and this arrangement is called as a gas generator. We have boiler or steam generator in case of steam power plant where steam will be initially generated and that generated steam will be passed to the steam turbine. Here same thing exists here we have an arrangement where we want high pressure, high temperature gas. So, that high pressure, high temperature gas would be generated by an arrangement and that arrangement is called as the gas generator. So, power turbine runs on a gas generator that has an advantage. In single shaft arrangement, we need a starter to run the complete gas turbine power plant. But in this case, having this shaft separate, we need only starter for this gas generator. We do not need any starter for this power, power turbine since it runs on the exhaust of the gas turbine. Electric motor, steam turbine, hydraulic motor are the general choices, choices for the starter. There is one disadvantage of this twin shaft arrangement and that disadvantage is linked with the control. If there is a variation in load or load shedding at the power turbine, then there is a speed up of the turbine shaft and that speed enhancement or decrement needs to be controlled. So, there has to be a control system devised uh, in association with the power shaft or twin shaft. So, here we uh, complete today's lecture where uh, we have seen how the 
uh, arrangements are there in an open cycle gas turbine power plant. Thank you.